In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural obsidian material in Blender. And then after I show you how to create the procedural material, we'll be joining the material together into this custom node group so you can customize the material. So we have the overall size of the entire material, and then we also have the color here so you can keep it black if you want to, or if you wanted to, you could make it like a very dark blue or a very dark purple. Then we have the chunky scale, and this is going to change the size of the obsidian chunks, and then we also have have the wave scale we also have the noise scale and then also this noise distortion and this will really change the look of the material we also have the roughness of the material we also have the wave bump strength and also the noise bump strength and then we also have the noise displacement so if you turn this up it's going to be a bit more noisy and look a bit more cracked and kind of beat up or if you turn this down it's just going to have all the little chunks and then finally we have the displacement strength if you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And I've also finished creating another 10 procedural materials, so I've just released Blender Procedural Material Pack number 15. You can check out that material pack with the links in the description. And I've also updated my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack with all of my new procedural materials. And all of my existing customers can re-download the product files to get the new update with the new materials. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. Alright, so real quick I'll show you how I have my scene set up if you want to set it up the same way that I have. So I pressed Shift A, I went here to Mesh, and I added an Icosphere. And then after I add the Icosphere right behind me, if you click on the arrow to open up the Add Icosphere settings, I turn this up to 6 because I want it to be very detailed. And why I'm making it very detailed is because the material will use the displacements, and so the displacements need lots of geometry to make the mesh actually pop out. And then I can shade this object smooth. Then I can scale the object down, and I'll scale it down to like a 0.2, because the default objects in Blender are pretty large, they're a bit larger than an average human. And then I will press Ctrl A, and I will apply the scale so that this is now the object's new default size. Now I did mention that we're going to be using displacements, so if you want to use the displacements, then right up here on the render properties you will need to be using the Cycles Rendering Engine if you want to use the displacements, because material displacements are not supported in Blender Eevee. You can however follow along with this tutorial in Blender Eevee, but just know that the displacements will not work in Eevee, so if you want to do this in Eevee then instead of using a sphere you could model some other rock object and then add the material to that object. Now because we're using the displacements, I do want lots of geometry, so also on this object, if you go over here to the modifier properties, I added the subdivision surface modifier, and I turned the levels viewport and render just up to 1, and so this will subdivide the mesh and give it even more geometry for the displacements to use. Now for the lighting, I started off adding these three lights right here, so these are area lights, so if you press shift A and go down to light, you can add an area light, and on these area lights, I turned the power up to 20, and I made them a slight blue color, and I also turn the shape to rectangle and made them kind of long and I have one on this side one on the top and then one over on this side and this will give some nice rim lights and reflections to the material and then I also added another area light right up here and this area light I turn the shape to disc so that it's circular and I turn the power up to 40 so that it is nice and bright to add some nice bright lighting on top of the object and then to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections over here on the world properties, I added in the Photo Studio Broadway Hall, and I downloaded the 1K HDR version. And this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, so I'll have a link in the video description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. So once you download the HDRI, you can add a new world in the Blender, and you can click on the yellow dot next to color, and you can choose environment texture, and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. Now if I hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered mode, you can see that the background is transparent and I did that just to make the background less distracting so you can't see it. So if you click here on the render properties and then scroll down you can open up the film tab here and you can check mark the transparent button so the background is transparent. And also if you go down here to the color management I'm using the view transform of filmic and the look to very high contrast to make the colors look nicer. And then I also added a camera, so if you press Shift A, you can go down here and add a camera, and then I pointed the camera just at the object. And then if you click right over here on the object data properties with the camera selected, I turned the focal length to 80 just to zoom the camera in a bit. Now also if you go up here to the output properties, I turned the resolution to 1920 by 1920, and that way it is a square image. So you can now click right up here to go to the shading workspace, and I'll hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered mode. So in the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right over here, and the shader editor 
editor here. So I'm going to click on the object and I'll click on new to add a new material. Now to make sure the displacements will work on the material, again, you need to make sure you're using the cycles rendering engine if you want to use the displacements. And then once you add the new material, you can click here on the material properties and you can scroll down here to the settings and you can go to surface. We want to set the displacement here to displacement and bump. And this is telling the material that it can use the displacements. And then I also will be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can click on edit and go to the preferences. And then over there on the add-ons tab, just search for node wrangler and you can check mark the node wrangler add-on. So to start off, let's take the base color here and I'm going to make it fully black. If you wanted to, you could make it a very dark purple or a very dark blue, but I'm going to make it fully black. And then I want to turn the roughness down to make it more shiny. So I'll turn the roughness to like a 0.16. So I now want to add the texture, which is going to be put into the normal to give it some bump on the surface of the material. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for the wave texture and let's drop the wave texture here. And then I will control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. And if you control shift and select different nodes, that is using the feature of the node wrangler and it'll allow you to preview the different nodes. Also with the wave texture selected, I'll press control T and that will add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I want to use the object coordinates. So let's put the object into the vector. So I now want to change some of the wave texture settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 22 and then I also want to distort it quite a lot. So I'm going to store it to 130. Then and I also want there to be a lot of detail, so I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And then I do actually want to turn the detail scale down a bit so that it's a bit smaller. So I'll turn the detail scale to a 0.3. And I'll leave these other values at the default. Now I want to make this texture look a bit more distorted and random and make it look more like obsidian. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for a noise texture. And I'm going to put the noise texture in between the mapping and the wave. And so because this noise texture is going through the vector, it's distorting the placement of the wave texture. And I want to make sure the color is going into the vector of the wave texture. So now let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the scale to six. I also want to leave the detail at two because I don't want it to be too detailed. And then I also want to turn the roughness down so that it is a bit more distorted. And then this distortion here, I will turn up to a 0.7 so it's a bit more distorted. So you can see how random that is. So I now want to take this wave texture color and I want to put it into the normal to give the material some bump and then I will control shift and select the principled shader. Now you can see it's not working properly. That's because we need to convert the color data into normal data. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's put the bump node between the wave texture and the normal. So just stick it right there. And then I want the wave texture color to be going into the height value of the bump. So now you can see it looks very bumpy. Now that is way too strong. So I'm going to turn the strength down to like a 0.07 so that it is much less strong. But now you can see we have those little waves over the surface. Now I do want to make the waves look a bit more flat so I'm going to zoom way in here so you can see it really close up. And I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp between the wave texture and the bump. So just stick it right there. So now if I drag this white tab over, you can see it is kind of flattening the wave. So it's kind of flattening the top of those waves. So I'll just drag the white tab kind of to about here. So it is a bit more flat and that looks a bit better. Now I also want to give this material some overall noise in the surface bump. So I'm going to click on this noise texture and I'll press control shift D. So control shift D is going to duplicate the noise but it'll keep the wire plugged up. And I can also maybe box select these and bring them down. And I will control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So now let's change some of the settings. So this one, I want to turn the scale up to 15 and I also want it to be very detailed. So I'll turn the detail to the max of 15. And also this roughness here, I will turn back to the default of 0.5 and I will leave the distortion at 0.7. So now this is very detailed and so we can plug it up to the normal to give some noisy bump. So I'm going to select this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to drop it here after the first one. So the normal can go through the normal. So we now have this extra height value that we can add data into. So let's take the noise texture factor and I'm going to put that into the height of the bump. So now if I control shift and select the bump, you can see what it's doing. If I zoom in there, you can see there's a bit of noise. However, I do want it to be very subtle. So let's turn the strength 
to a 0 0.03 on this second bump. So I can now control shift and select the principal shader to preview it, and I will zoom out to see that material. So this is looking a bit like obsidian, but it is very smooth and round. So I want to make it kind of bumpy and chunky. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search, and I'll search for the Voronoi texture, and let's put the Voronoi texture under this noise. And then I want to take the mapping vector, and let's put that under the vector, because I want it to be using the object coordinates. And I can control shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. So you can see the Voronoi texture is white, and then it goes down and has these black dots. I want to see more of the dots though, so I'm going to turn the scale up to 11. So if you look around on the Voronoi texture, you can see there are some little white areas, kind of some little white lines, and then inside the white lines are these little black areas. So if we put this Voronoi into the displacement, that'll make the white areas pop out more, and then the parts that are darker, that is going to be going back in more. So let's take the distance, I'm going to pull out a wire, and I'm going to put this into the displacement of the material output. And then I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now if the displacements are not working, then you need to click right here on the render properties and you need to make sure you're using the cycles rendering engine because Eevee doesn't support material displacements. And also if you go down here to the material properties, make sure to open up the settings and under the surface, you want to make sure that the displacement is using displacement and bump. And this is telling the material that it can use the displacements. Now you can see it's not really working properly. It's just jutting off to the side and that's because I need to convert this black and white data into displacement data. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search and I'll search for the displacement node and I want to put it in between the Voronoi and the displacement. So just drop it here and then I can drag it down here under the shader. Now to actually convert this to displacement data we want the distance to be going into the height value. So the distance of the Voronoi can go into the displacement height. So now you can see it is actually popping out the mesh, although it is way too strong. So I'm going to turn the scale way down to a 0 0.07. So it is much more subtle. But now you can see those white areas are popping out. And so now we have these sharp, chunky areas. So that is looking pretty cool, but I do also want to mix this with some noise. So I'll press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search and I'll search for the mix color. And let's put the mix color before the displacement. Now I want the Voronoi texture distance to be going into color A, but then I want to take this noise texture color and I'm going to put that into color B. So this mix node here is mixing the noise and the Voronoi together. Now if I drag the factor around you can see it's going to be only the Voronoi or only the noise. But instead of just dragging them around, I want to click on the mix here and I want to change it to darken. So by changing it to darken, it's going to add the dark values. So now if I turn the factor to zero, it's just using the Voronoi, but then as I drag the factor up, it's adding the dark values. So the Voronoi is still there, but I can add more and more of that noise. Now I don't want to add very much noise, so I'm going to turn the factor to a 0.3 and that way now there is a bit of noise. You can kind of see right there, there's a bit of noise there and some over here, but most the material is that chunky Voronoi texture. And that is it. So that is the procedural obsidian material. So I'm now going to show you how to join this material into a custom node group so you can control the values. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all of these nodes except the material output. And then with these nodes selected, I can press control G and control G will join the nodes into a node group. I'm going to press the N key to open the side panel, and then we have inputs and outputs. And here on the outputs, I'm going to double click on the BSDF because I just want to rename it to shader because I like that better. So then I can hit the tab key to go outside of the node group, and then I can click on the node group and I can drag it over here next to the material output. I'm also going to drag this out to make it a bit bigger. And then also here I can call it obsidian, so I'll copy the name. I'll click here on the node group and paste it with control V, just paste the name, so it is called obsidian. So if you select the node group, you can hit the tab key and that'll go in and out of the node group. So now we can add up all the custom values here into the inputs and the outputs. So let's go over here to the starting of the material and we have this group input. So let's drag this down here so we can plug values up to the group input to control it outside of the node group. So I first want to be able to control the overall scale, and this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures. So this mapping scale will control the entire size of the material. So let's put the scale into the group input, and then I want to click on the input here, and I want to click on the type, and I want to change it to float instead so it is one single value instead of the three values. Now right here on the default value, I want to turn this back to one because that's the default, and then if I tab to go out of the node group, I want to turn the scale just back to one because that's the default. So I can now 
tab to go back into the node group. And the next value that I want to add is the color. So I'll click on the group input and I'm going to drag this over here. And then let's take the base color and I can put that into the extra socket here. And then you can leave this at base color, but I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to just rename it to color. Now I also want to be able to control the scale of the chunks, so let's drag the group input right back here, and this Vorno texture, this scale value, is going to control the size of those chunks. So let's put the scale into the extra socket here, and then I'll double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename this to Chunky Scale. Now I also want to be able to control the wave scale, so that is going to be those little waves there on the surface, so we can take this wave texture scale, and let's put that into the extra socket, and then I can double click on this, and I'll rename it to Wave Scale. Then I also want to be able to control the noise scale. So this noise texture here, you can see if I drag the scale, that is changing the noise. So let's put the scale here into the extra socket, and I can double click on this to rename it, and I'll rename it to noise scale. Now I also want to be able to control this distortion value here on the noise because this distortion really can change the look of the material. So I'll take the distortion, I'll put that into the extra socket, and then if I double click on this to rename it, I'm going to rename it to noise distortion. Then I also want to be able to control the roughness of the material, so let's drag the group input right over here, and we can put the roughness into the extra socket, and it's already named roughness. Then I want to control the two bump strengths, so I'll drag the group input down here behind the bumps, and this first one, this is going to change change the wave bump strength. So let's put the strength there into the extra socket, and then I can click on this and I'll rename it to wave bump strength. Then we also have this second bump here, and this is changing the noise bump strength. So we'll put the strength value into the extra socket here, and I can rename this one to noise bump strength. Then I want to be able to control the amount of noise in the displacement. So if I drag the group input right down here, we have this factor value and that'll add more noise or get rid of the noise. So let's put the factor into the extra socket here, and then I can double click on this to rename it, and I'm going to rename this to noise displacement. And then finally, I want to control the displacement strength, so let's put the displacement scale into the extra socket here, and I'm going to rename this to displacement strength. So I can now drag the group input right back here behind the texture coordinate, press the tab key to go outside of the node group, and I'll press the N key to close the side panel. And so there is the finished procedural material, and we now have all the different custom values that we can control, like the overall scale. You can also change the color. You can also change the chunky scale and the wave scale, also the noise scale and the distortion. You can also change the roughness, and then you have some different bump strengths. And then finally, you have the noise displacement and the displacement strength. So thank you for watching this tutorial, I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to purchase this material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And I've also created another 10 procedural materials, so I've just released Blender Procedural Material Pack number 15. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, and my Ultimate Material Pack comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up in Blender's Asset Browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. But I hope you found this helpful, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.